Welcome back to another episode of Finding Gratitude. I am your host for today, Miguel. Hopefully, you guys remembered my name from now on. Ah, man, what a week. Um, I haven't been really thinking too much about topics to talk about, I guess, for today's podcast. Mainly because I wasn't too sure if I should be recording one because I've got a podcast coming out tomorrow, which I actually shot last week while I was in... um, in Queensland, so I'm kind of like a week in advance, um, which is kind of cool, so, so I was like, fuck, do I need to write down topics, should I not write down topics, should I just skip a week and record, you know, not on the typical Monday that I record and put it out on Tuesday kind of thing, um, and then also I guess I've been kind of preoccupied, or my mind's been preoccupied a little bit because I've had, a f- I mean, it, it hasn't been too much on, but I still had, you know, things in my mind and I haven't been really thinking about this as much, so I guess like... Um, just like how two weeks ago I just uh, started my podcast just by recapping my week. So let's, let's see what I, um, what I got up to this week. So I got back from Queensland, I think on Tuesday. Yeah, so I flew to Queensland uh, last week on the Saturday, no, on the Sunday. Um, I had booked for a hot air balloon thing on the Monday soaking to go even though i'm kind of like scared of of uh, <laughs> of heights a little bit uh, i'm just still geared up to go um but they rang me on like monday morning and unpredictable weather the wind was too strong they they cancelled on me so i was like oh damn and they're like cool um you can either get refunded or you just book another day and i was like sure thing i'll just book another day so um i booked it for this friday <laughs> so i'm actually gonna be going to queensland again this week sorry it wasn't last week um that i went to queensland because today's month oh yeah it was last weekend because this weekend just gone past so i usually record my my episodes on on mondays um and and and, and i put them out on tuesday so yeah so obviously the weekend had just gone past i wasn't here as well uh but yeah last week i was in queensland and i got back on the on, on the tuesday after my mates um Mate's birthday. We went out to dinner. Oh man! Every time I swear, every single time I go to fucking Queensland and I talk to people, they just uh, I kind of they kind of remind me, or they or I just remember of like how much and how badly I would love to move to Queensland. <laughs> oh man, it's crazy. So on on the Sunday that I got there. So I flew in in the afternoon, I think. I can't remember. But on the Monday, it was my mate's birthday. And in the morning, we since since we couldn't go to the hot air balloon, we ended up going to the gym. We went to the gym. I think it's EW. No, it's not EWP. I can't remember the name of the place, but it apparently it's the biggest gym in the Southern Hemisphere. It's like, um, what's a store that's like Bunnings Warehouse, but it's not. I can't remember. But it's like, think about think of a Bunnings Warehouse and just and sort of the Bunnings Warehouse is a fucking massive gym. Um, I think they have an octagon as well, like a Ninja Warrior course. Yeah, it's it's full on. But yeah, so I went there. I trained probably for like 30 minutes. And at the end of it, we went to the sauna, uh, to the steam room. And then they've got like hot and cold pools. So cool. But man, so we went, m- me and my mate, Zach, we went to the, uh, to the pools. We were chilling. Fuck the cold pool, bro. It was probably like 16 degrees. But shit, that shit was cold. Um, and it's good for your recovery. It's good for the body, man. It's, it's good for the cells. But, bro, like, we were there probably for, like, I don't know, 10 minutes. And in that period of time, this dude comes up to us, starts talking to us, literally on the same wavelength as us. Just, you know, we start vibing out really, 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 really good. Um, he tells us that he's he's Christian and he he's very Christian, I guess. And um, But he's still, you know, so open and like he knows about all the other religions and about the universe and whatnot. And we were just having some fucking really cool chats. And then some other dude joins us as well. And then we, we all find ourselves finding mad chats. And I'm just like, fuck, I've never been to a gym in Sydney that has hot and cold pools. And I jump into the pool and two people just, you know, end up going to the pools as well because it's it's not a big pool it's probably like like four by two think of it a rectangle like four meters by two meters yeah it's 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 not big at all um but yeah the four of us just chatting away and i'm just like bruh like in sydney i cannot picture myself in a place just like this um meeting two random people and just getting along with them so well like bruh the conversations we're having literally on point on 
on, I mean, what I would love to be having conversations here in the podcast. I was just like, fuck, I want to be best mates with you guys so I can bring you into my podcast. But, um, but yeah, so every, every time, man, I go to fucking Gold Coast, I go to Queensland, I always get reminded of how, how beautiful the place is, man. I mean, obviously, the place that I go to, it's or when I go to Queensland most of the time, I visit my mate, um, and he probably lives like 25, 30 minutes from the airport, just a bit northwest. I'm not going to say this, uh, I mean could say the suburb but i don't even think i remember it or i'll pronounce it correctly so i'll save myself from that but yeah it's about 25 minutes northwest from um from the gold coast airport and bro just seeing all the nature and just just mountains bro it's fucking so good but just the people man the people are just great i guess it's just different to the people that i um that i meet in sydney man it's just it's just it's just different so and then i went to my mate's dinner on the monday and then even just chatting to his mates and then just vibing out with people again. And I'm just like, fuck, like we are all on the same wavelength. I guess obviously I'm, it, it's very selective because going to my mate's birthday dinner and my mate's very like me, his mates are going to be similar to it. So, I mean, it's going to be like that, right? <laughs> but still, man, and I'm just like, fuck, like there's so many people out here with, that are just so open-minded and I can just speak to you them freely about you know the things that i like the things that i enjoy talking about you know things that are deep and meaningful and that you know would be changing changing people's not people's but just you know helping people in a sense man just i, I guess just healers a eh? just i feel like a bunch of healers and people that have experienced stuff that um that now they've realized that all they want to do is heal um other people and you know help them get better um are from there I don't meet too many people down here that are very like that, man. So, but yeah, so that was Monday, fucking sick time. And then on Tuesday, I uh, flew back home. Um, and then I did record a podcast as well while I was there, I think on a Sunday. So I did that. Was it on the Sunday? No, it wasn't a Monday. I think I recorded the podcast on the Monday. Man, like my, my memory is completely fried and it's been like that for a little bit. Um, yeah, so it was it was Monday that I also recorded the podcast. The podcast is probably yeah, and it's definitely out by now. Um, really, really good podcast, uh, and I guess some of the ideas that I wanted to talk about kind of come from there a little bit. But um, but yeah, so I did the podcast as well with Lenny and had my mate's birthday dinner, and then on Tuesday I flew back in. Um, so I edited that podcast pretty much Tuesday and Wednesday, get it all done. And then Thursday and Friday, um, man, actually every single day that day, I pretty much was working. So on the Tuesday that I got back, I smashed out the, the podcast, like the, I edited the podcast and whatnot. And then on the Wednesday, um, so the stuff that we've shot or like as a company we've shot last year and the stuff that I've also shot individually, like m music videos, with a client and whatnot um, that I shot last year and, you know, clients wanted uh, stuff to be edited. So I needed to edit like 84 small e-com videos uh, for one of our clients. That took me a few hours. I had to also finish up a music video that took me a few hours and I was just editing three other videos at the same time. So, and then, so I had all that. So I guess my mind has been preoccupied a lot on work and I guess just a little bit stressed out. And then on the Thursday, yes, on the Thursday was the day that I edited all those 84 small videos. There, there were only 10 second videos, but still like you have to go through this footage of the models, you know, showcasing a specific product and pick the best three seconds or four seconds and then fill out to a 10 second clip. It's the, it's the clips that you see if you, you know, shop stuff online. Um, and when you keep going next, next, instead of seeing the photo, you see a little video. That's yeah, pretty much that. So I had a lot of work. And then on the Friday morning, had um had a job as well, uh, an, an actual shoot. So I had to, um, and I was going to be working by myself. And um, yeah, like, so it's from, from Thursday to Friday, because I stayed up pretty much to like two, three in the morning, making sure that all the edits were done. And then after I finished editing, I could pack for Friday shoot. I barely got any sleep, man. Uh, if I check the whoop up, I think it said I got like three hours sleep. And um, crazy of me, on the Thursday, I Thursday I ended up doing two workouts, back almost back to back. I think I trained from three to four, and then from six to seven. 
just because I was like, hey, man, I'm not going to be able to work out. Actually, because I didn't work out one of the other days. So I'm like, and then I wasn't going to be able to work out on Friday and Saturday because I was going away. So I'm like, fuck it, let's smash out two workouts in one day. And I did it. Um, and I probably shouldn't have not done that because <laughs> I knew I wasn't going to get much sleep the next day because I needed to finish working. And also, if I didn't train, I probably would have finished like the editing videos earlier than three in the morning to start packing all the other shit that I needed to pack for the Friday. But man, I guess you live and you learn or you're always just pushing yourself, man. I fucking just love pushing myself a little bit. So I smashed out two workouts. Oh, my, my arms and my shoulders were destroyed. So Wednesday was a weightlifting day, uh, which was the workout that I first did and then on the thursdays gymnastics days um so i did two workouts um yeah weightlifting and gymnastics and fuck i was destroyed so accumulation of fucking strength because i've got a whoop um yeah like if you know what a whoop is and cool but uh it's pretty much measuring my sleep my strain and my recovery so it's three things that are showcasing and um your strain is obviously the depending on the activities that you do every single day so i worked out twice um and 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 even stress can you know bring your strain up because you're changing your your heart rate i guess in a sense so if your heart rate goes up you're creating strain in your body um so yeah so after doing two workouts my strain was super high uh, I didn't get any sleep. I got three hours sleep. So Friday, I woke up. Obviously, I had a shoot, so I was ready to go. I had a had a Monster Energy drink, and man, I was feeling it. Hey, I was just feeling tired. I looked at my Whoop app, and it showed me that I have like eight percent, eight percent recovery. So I was in the red. Eight percent is really, really low. <laughs> um, I'm usually raging. I guess. Bit, ranging between like 60 to 90 you know on average days uh i do get really low numbers like 10 15 percent when i drink a few drinks a lot a lot of drinks um but yeah this time i didn't drink anything it's just literally too too much strain my body needed to recover so i needed to actually sleep for like i think my my uh i'm pretty sure the whoop was also telling me that i needed like 10 not i think it was nine hours of sleep to make sure i recover for the next day um i got a quarter of that a third of that sorry i only got three hours so my body was completely destroyed um and especially with the stress from the shoot because like i said i was working by myself i guess i've worked by myself but big type of client working by myself i had this i mean the logistics of getting there and all that stuff was all good. Um, I think it was more like doing something that I've kind of never done before, uh, which is kind of... I mean, I've definitely done something similar, but it's just in the format that we were doing it was different. And I essentially, we were helping a um, high-level, high, high I guess, CEOs and employees to um, help them uh, with some media training. So... A company was there to, uh, you know, give them tips and tricks on how to present and answer questions at panels and whatnot. And I was there to film a portion of it so they can rewatch and I can tell them what they can do better. But yeah, so something like that I really haven't done by myself before. So I was kind of stressing up a little bit about that. So then that would have cost, yeah, my recovery even shitter. So on Friday, I already felt average. Um, and then right after the shoot, it was from from 8 to 12, pushed out to like 1.30. Um, right after it, I had to come back to the office, drop off the equipment, drop off the car, and then I was going away for my sister's birthday. Shit, I had, I've had a busy, a busy fucking week. But um, yeah, so I was fucking tired as on the way. We went to the entrance almost like to one hour and a half, one, one hour and 40 minutes up north. So on the way there, I just fucking passed out probably for like a good 30 minutes. When I woke up, I did feel a little bit better, but no, nah, I still feel smashed. And because of all the workout, my body was completely sore, bro. My body was sore. Um, I could... I could feel like a cough building, so I was coughing a little bit, and then on Saturday, I woke up kind of feeling exactly the same, man, so I was like, fuck, I need to do something about this shit, so I tried to spend most of, I mean, I tried to get as much sun as I could, I probably got like two hours of, of sun, I did get pretty, pretty cooked, um, 
I did have 10 lines though, so I tried to even myself out. Uh, but yeah, so by me just getting, bro, so then on and on the Saturday, I had also like what, 9% recovery. So it had gone up by 1%. My HIV, which is your heart rate variability, was still super low. Um, on average, my HIV is between 160 milliseconds to like, no, 160 is too much. Maybe like 130 to like 180. Um, on the Friday, it was like, 46 and on the Saturday it was like 40 so it was fucking super low and I could I, I just felt sick like I felt fluy on the Saturday I just felt like my body sore like I've I got the flu um, my throat's starting to itch my head feels a bit you know like I get a bit of a headache um, I just had I just felt fluish man so it was like yes and that that's what I was saying I was like fuck I need to I need to I need to do do something to change it and i need to start feeling good i need to start feeling better um and it was my sister's birthday as well so i wanted to make sure you know like and i was away with my family so i wanted to make sure that i was i was i was feeling the best that i could so spend spend most of the time in the sun i think it was like two hours that i spent in the sun probably just a bit more uh obviously with the different activities that we were doing but man that actually helped a lot just spending time in the sun and um i was meditating as well during it and man in my head pretty much all i was doing was telling my body to use my the food that i just had for breakfast as energy and to try to help the cells to fight back this sickness that i'm trying to fight um and i did that for probably like 90 minutes like no joke straight 90 minutes breathing breath work a little bit of breath work you know try to go into a nice calm state um and just keep kept thinking about that, kept meditating about that, and then yeah, like a few hours go past, and I'm feeling fucking three times better, not ten times better. I don't feel a hundred percent yet, but I felt fucking much much better. And then on the Sunday, fuck, I felt normal again, and my HIV went up to normal. So I don't know if it was like, but <laughs> there's this there's this video that I always think about, which is Wim Hof, and and it's on YouTube. You can you can definitely find it. It's uh, Wim Hof. Um, he goes, or they were doing some studies on Wim Hof, and uh, if you don't know who Wim Hof is, he's uh, he's the Iceman. Google him; he's pretty, he's pretty, he's a pretty smart dude, man. Like, in, and his story is fucking phenomenal. It's so good. Um, what was I talking about? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, and like I said, his story is fucking amazing. And um, yeah, so there's this there's this video on YouTube where it shows you Wim Hof. Um, they take him to a hospital. They they inject him with a virus and then within like a day, he manages to cure himself from the virus uh, just by breathing and like meditating and then they're like, fuck, how did you do that? It's like, can you do it to other, can you show other people? And then he showed like nine other people and they they injected them with the virus as well. I think some of them might have gotten placebo. I can't remember correctly. It was probably a couple of years ago that I watched this video. But yeah, same thing. Uh, they all did, you know, the work that Wim Hof told them to do and they all got cured. So I was like, fuck, you know, if these people can do it, we can all change change the way that um that our body is reacting because of the sickness, man. It's just... So yeah, so I was like, fuck it. I'm going to try this. I just kept thinking that in the back of my head to remind me that what I was doing is possible kind of thing. Just believing, man. And then, like I said, Sunday I felt fucking great, ready to go. And unfortunately, that was the day that uh, we were going back home. But yeah, so that's that's Sunday. And today's Monday, right? Yeah, so that was yesterday. I got back yesterday. And today, just got some sun in the morning, read my book. I'm still reading uh, What Happened to You. And it's a fucking really, really good book. It's big words. It's full on. It's gonna take me a while to read it all. I might have to read it. It's it's, it's that type of book that you have to read a couple of times though to actually make sense on um, what it's telling you about. Uh, but yeah, man. So that is pretty much the, my week wrapped up. And like I said, in a couple of days I'll be flying back to Queensland to go on this holiday balloon. And there is an event that we'll be attending on the Saturday. So. Caleb, man, fucking Caleb, he's a fucking G, uh, he's a person that we, we are very keen to see on the Saturday, but, oh man, so today, Monday, being Valentine's Day, so, um, I don't know when the Super Bowl was, I think the Super Bowl probably was today, because it would have been Sunday in the States, 
But the halftime show, bro, fuck. My God. Holy shit. I watched the trailer last week. Um, and I thought that was it. I thought this because I'm not too much into NFL. Almost got that wrong. I think it's NFL, right? Yeah. Um, I'm not really onto the, um, you know, American Football League and all that stuff. But So I wasn't too sure if the trailer that I saw was the actual thing, but it turns out it was just a trailer. But oh my God, bro, paying homage to like 90s rappers, especially from fucking East Coast and West Coast. And holy shit, holy fucking shit, man. That was fucking good, bro. I'm not going to joke. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like how fucking good was that halftime show? The fucking Pepsi halftime show. I wonder how much money they spent on that because they usually get two big names and they're costing them like 100 mil. Uh, but this time they got a fucking lineup, a fucking lineup, bro. So good and fucking when when fucking still DRE just comes on, Dr. Dre just playing it on the piano, man. It's just fucking goosebumps, bro. It's like holy fuck. <sighs> yeah, it's fucking intense, man. And then like at the end, fucking Dr. Dre just oh, bro. Imagine being Dr. Dre and like rapping. Your fucking song that came out over 20 years ago in front of thousands of people. Fuck, that would have been a feeling to never forget, bro. That's fucking incredible. And I kind of chase that, you know, watching that. I'm like, fuck, I would love to be Dr. Dre. I chase that feeling, man. Like, I completely want to feel that. I want to be... But, but like, the way that I that I think that I'm going to be able to achieve it um, is by being a football coach, man. So imagine like taking, um, imagine taking a, a national team, a national football team, a national soccer team um, to, to like, let's say the World Cup and like, you don't have to win, you know, the fucking, the World Cup, but imagine just taking, taking a team to the World Cup and just going to the stadium coming out out of the stadium with the players and just fucking hear the crowd roar fuck and then imagine winning that game everyone in that country it's gonna think you're the fucking biggest <laughs> so oh man and it's and and i guess it's like similar feeling that uh dr dre will be feeling right it's like fucking just getting all this energy from all these people and everyone just loves you it's like fuck I want that feeling. So I think the way that I'm going to achieve it is by um, becoming a football manager or a football coach. So I think 10 years from now, uh, whatever I'm doing, I'm going to drop everything and I'm going to start focusing on that. You heard it here first. <laughs> uh, but yes, fucking that Pepsi, man. That uh, Pepsi Super Bowl halftime show. How much money did they spend? Oh, man. I just want to watch it again now, man. It's that good. I'm probably going to walk at home. I'm just going uh, to be watching it because it's fucking crazy. It just reminds me of the, like, 90s and the early 2000s. And why was music back then so good? Like, music now, it's... I don't know. I can't compare it. I hope, I hope you know what I mean. But, like, music from then just does not compare to music from now on. It's like, no. And I know K-Dot was there as well. Shout out Kendrick Lamar. But um, there's not that many people from from that time that were on this halftime show. I don't know if it's because they were trying to focus more from Compton um, and back then. I'm not too sure. But bro, even like when Eminem comes out, holy shit. Fuck. Even ta, uh, Lose Yourself, Eminem, and like it comes up and the wall just starts breaking and it's just like fucking hell. So I ended up Googling it, uh, going to Google and searching the halftime show, trying to find out how much how much Pepsi paid for fucking all these artists. And um, it obviously doesn't say yet. But it did say that apparently tickets to go to the Super Bowl cost over $3,000 per seat. That's a lot of money. Holy fucking shit. So no wonder they can, you know, blow tons of money. Tons, tons, tons of money on this, um, on this artist. Even the ads, apparently, they blow heaps, heaps, heaps of money. Um, I had a, I had a little point that just says "sun," 
which um, which is a topic that I guess I started to think when I was uh, in the entrance, um, especially on the um, on this Saturday, because intuitively I just thought I need to get some vitamin C. <laughs> no way, I need to get some vitamin D. <laughs> Uh, so give me that sun. Let's see if the sun was gonna help me, you know, feel better because I was feeling like fucking shit, and it made me think like, how, like how often do we do we get sun, man? And then I started to think, you know, when when I used to work at Westpac and I used to work full time five days a week. Before that, I used to work for Capital Finance. Um, so Westpac was in Barangaroo, Capital Finance was in Bella Vista, but essentially I would have been inside a building for eight hours, yeah, six to eight hours every single day, what are, let's just say six hours, man, that's a lot, six hours every single day inside, most of the, most of that time it was during the daytime, so I'll leave my house and it would be like seven in the morning, the sun's out, it's not too strong, I'll get home. It's mainly dark, right? So throughout the week, I would never get some sun. Shit. Weekends? Uh, back then, the only thing I was doing on the weekends was getting on it and getting fucking loose because what else are you going to do when you're like 20 years old um, and just want to have a good time? So I was never getting some sun, man. And it makes me think, like, how many people out there are not getting enough sun? Like, when was the last time you spent 30 minutes just sun baking? Like, just literally not doing anything, just getting some sun. Obviously, if you're lighter skin, you need to wear, um, what do you call it? <laughs> Sunscreen? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, what do you call it? As if, like, I don't even know what it's called. Um, I haven't used sunscreen in a little bit. It's 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 been a while, but... Yeah, obviously, you know, if you've got a lighter skin, you got to wear sunscreen, you got to stay protected because you're going to get really burnt. I haven't been burnt in ages, man, or I haven't felt, you know, the the feeling of burning. I I, I did I was peeling maybe a couple of weeks ago. Um, I think it was after the festival that I went to and it was in Queensland. But yeah, man, like it made me think like, fuck, like, you know, when I used to work full time, I was never getting the sun. Like I was never getting sun. And yeah, you know, you can get vitamin C tablets, you can get vitamin C, vitamin D tablets, you can get vitamin D spray. So there's other ways that you can get the vitamins, but I'm sure, you know, that there's things that you can't get except from just the sun. And then the other thing I started thinking about was like, okay, so it, you know, like what's a common way to get sun, like, you can do it anywhere. Mainly it's at the beach, right? Like you go to the beach to sunbake. But um, even then you're wearing clothes. Especially for me, from a guy, like I'll be wearing shorts or like speedos or whatever you want to be wearing. But then it made me, th you know, started to think like when was the last time all of our body parts got sun? I can't remember. Like I've never been naked like out in public or at the beach for my whole body to get sun it's like fuck and and the other thing is uh why i started to think about this was because my tan lines uh <laughs> you can definitely see my tan lines bro like you can see that my tan only goes up to a specific you know spot on my leg and same on my torso it goes down to a specific spot and then everything else is just like yellowish and white and i'm just like fuck i don't like that color and it's like yeah, so it's made me started to think like, fuck, when was the last time I was like my whole body got some sun? And I'm talking about everything, you know what I mean? Like, and it, it's been ages. It's been a while. And then it's like, fuck, like, is it healthy for, for our bodies not to get sun? Like, especially if we're working full time and we're just inside, um, inside an office building, inside whatever man like even if you don't work for an office and you work at a warehouse you're just inside like literally when's the last time you're fucking getting some sun man it just it makes me think and it's like duh like why are we so trapped like uh, we don't have to be trapped man because you, we obviously work because we've got commitments and those commitments we've built them ourselves so get rid of the commitments as much as we can and we don't have to work as hard because there's not many bills to pay but no, we don't. We don't like living that life. <laughs> we want the expensive things, man. We want the expensive things. We want the new iPhones. We want the new cars. We want the sleek clothes. 
We want the best jewelry. We want to get a haircut every week, every two weeks. We want to look good. <laughs> and everything costs money, man. <laughs> oh, don't work so hard. Don't work so hard. Get some sun. That's, that's, that's what I'm actually realizing, man. Don't work so hard. Get some sun. Um, but yeah, so that was my sun topic. Good thing I covered that. <laughs> Oh, uh, man. So, yeah, today is Valentine's Day, eh? She... Today is Valentine's Day. I can't remember the last time I was... I had a girlfriend during Valentine's Day. It's been ages. I haven't had a girlfriend in, like... 2013? No, no, no. 2015, probably. 2015. So, that's, like... Seven years ago. Wow. Seven years ago, man. That's a long time. And I was, I was, yeah. Wow. Seven years. Yeah, it's definitely been seven years. Shit. I feel, I feel, I feel lucky and blessed at the same time because uh, on birthdays, I mean, if I was, you know, obviously had a girlfriend, I'd have to buy gifts i need to spend money on going out and it's just i mean i'm not i'm not trying to say being in a relationship is bad but all the money that you spend on that if you do have a relationship i'm just spending it on myself (laughs) and i don't mind that it's actually very very nice like i haven't spent money on valentine's day in ages and if i did i would be spending it on myself but man, um, so I've been, I've been having. Well, I did have this thought the other, the, the last couple of days because, so, if a few of my mates uh, have have had birthdays this month, uh, you know, and I was with my mate the other day, and then he's like, "Fuck," he's getting all these messages because it's his birthday, and he's like, "Wow, I feel so loved, I feel so good," and it made me think like. You know, we as humans, we we can sometimes depend on seeking external love to make us feel good and and you know to make us feel feel better, I guess. And um, when I think about myself, I'm always like, actually, well, if I was to explain it better, exactly at that point when my friend said that and he's getting all these messages in my head, I was like, fuck, like. I kind of like that I got rid of social media so people don't contact me and the people that can only wish me happy birthday are the people that have my number and they'll call me or message me but because I've gotten rid of all social media, there's not that many of them and you know what, I'm not going to lie, there's been a few times when it's my being my birthday and I've just wanted to turn my phone off. (laughs) I just wanted to turn my phone off because I don't want to deal with people. (laughs) It's like, don't wish, ah, uh, you're calling me to wish me happy birthday, thanks. And then pick up the phone again, oh, thank you. And um, I don't know if that's bad or good, but I guess I don't seek that love as much from other people, especially on my birthday. I don't know if that sounds weird or not. And then the other thing is, like, it makes me think, is like, yeah, okay, I'm not looking for external validation because I'm a very humble person. Like, when I go and do things... And I've always kind of been this type of person. I guess psychedelics made me a bit more humble. Um, just understanding that really nothing matters. So uh, just to stop scare, like to to stop caring as much. But yeah, even when I was younger, like I've always done things, and I've never been like looking for appreciation from others. Like I know in high school would. Don't want to mention names, but in high school we had a mate that would do things and would tell others that he did those things uh, just so everyone else can be like, you're a sick cunt. And I was kind of similar to that, um, but I never would tell people about it. I just used to do shit and just be like, cool. Like, and if people found out, it's like, oh, fuck, don't find out about that. Like, no, I didn't do that. That was not me. Try to act cool kind of thing. I've just always been a little, um I've just always been a humble person like I don't I don't do things wanting validation from other people like if I do something good or if I do something to you which you think it's good it's because 
I just like doing that for you and I feel good about doing that it's not because I want you to be like oh thank you so much or whatever like so yeah and then that made me think you know like maybe being more humble um, you stop seeking external validation and like I said maybe psychedelics did help me a little bit about being humble but I think me being humble kind of started from even like just my parents and I feel like it's when I would have been, you know, too even young to remember. <laughs> but um, I remember when I was, so my parents separated, I don't know, two, 2002, 2003. Can't remember too much. Um, and I remember going back, to, so, so, so my mom lives in Australia, my dad still lives in Peru. And I remember going back to Peru and um, speaking to like my cousins and like my, my cousins and even my aunties, my uncles, so my brothers, sisters and brothers. They would always say how nice mum was and how humble she was and she would just help everyone. And that always kind of comes back into my head when I think about myself and I'm just like, when, well, when people think I'm humble, I'm like, fuck. I think I kind of got it from my mum. And like, my parents have always taught me, you know, to always give back. And I always do. <laughs> and I feel good at giving back, man. I feel better. Like even <laughs> and that and that I guess goes into my next topic because but um oh the little point that I have to talk about. But I just enjoy giving back. Like even if it's even if it means I'm out of pocket and I don't have any money, if you feel good, I feel good. That's all that matters. Um Yeah, like no no fucking joke. And um yeah, so going back into that, you know, seeking external validation, like I said, maybe if we're just more humble in our lives, we wouldn't be seeking that externally. But then I started to, you know, read more pages on this book that I'm reading, um, which is What Happened to You. And is it What Happened to You? I think it's called What Happened to You. And um, it talks about, uh, what does it talk about that I wanted to touch on? Hold on. Yeah, so it talks about love and and um, pretty much childhood trauma, right? And if you haven't been loved, you're not going to be, especially when you're growing up as a baby, like pretty much from zero to four, if you, if you haven't been loved, you're not going to know how to love, right? And it's, it's crazy. Like it goes into in depth with all these fucking uh, terms and like things, like our neuro, our neurons in our brain. I'm gonna chop this, but essentially, when we when we're babies, if we see our parents taking care of us, to us we're interpreting that as love, and our neurons are being created and expanding, um, and is getting that feedback of what's going on and interpreting, like I said, as love. So we learn what love is and then that's how when we grow older, we, we can do those things and we can love one another and we can love each other. But if as a kid you don't get that, you're not going to know how to love. So maybe it's not just about being humble, but it's just making sure that, you know, your childhood was was good that you got love from your parents or got love from your caregivers so you can live so you can give love back and then you can also learn how to love yourself but um even if you didn't get that as a child you know even if you were neglected as a child being self-aware would be the first step to gaining back to that power so to be to be to pretty much, what's it called? N neuroplasticity. N neuroplasticity when when our neurons can start to, I don't know if it's create more. Like I said, I'm going to butcher this shit. I need to read this book like fucking three times to actually know what the fuck I'm saying. But we can, we can relearn, man. So the, the unloved can learn how to love. And we can do that by love. <laughs> crazy as it sounds but yeah going back to loving yourself right because if we're always constantly seeking external validation 
if the love from others is making us feel good, how do we just feel good all the time? It could be just by loving yourself. Right? And this makes me think about one thing that I kind of do almost every day. Sometimes, sometimes, that's what sometimes. Sometimes I forget. Uh, but most of the times, I always do this. And you know, like, when I was thinking about, say, like, yesterday, when I was thinking about bringing this up, I was like, I feel kind of odd talking about this. Like, what are people going to think about me? Like, but then again, fuck it. Like, I'm going to say it anyway. Like, even if you think I'm a weirdo uh, or whatever, I shouldn't even be talking like this, but I'm just being honest with you. Um, so when I wake up, I try to have five deep breaths, calm my mind, get me into a nice meditative state just before I, you know, get into the craziness of things, even though I don't turn my phone off, do not disturb for like five hours. <laughs> um, yeah, I wake up, I try to read my book, but the first thing that I do, I take five deep breaths, get into a meditative state, real calm, and I would kiss any part of my body, uh, mainly is my biceps because, and like I don't kiss my biceps because I think they're getting big or like I think they're big or whatever. Like I'm, I, I, I don't care about, I mean, I do obviously care about looks, but I don't like, I don't work out to get big. I work out to stay healthy. Um, so I'm not doing it for those reasons, but it was just something that was close to me, like literally as I wake up, what's close to me. And then when I thought about this yesterday, I was like, actually my shoulders are the closest thing to me. Like I wouldn't even have to move. So I'll eventually just like go from side to side and I'll kiss like my, um, my, my, my biceps usually. Uh, I'm probably going to start kissing my, uh, my, my shoulders, but essentially you can kiss anywhere. I mean, you can even kiss your hands, but what I'll do is I'll, I'll kiss it. I'll, I'll kiss it and I'll, and I'll tell it that I that I love you. So I'm essentially starting my day telling myself that I love myself. And I do that like four or five times. Like literally as I wake up. So the first thing I do as I open my eyes, take five deep breaths, get into a nice meditative state, and then send all my love to myself. And I was like, fuck, like I've just been doing that intuitively, not realizing how much of a benefit it's been because it's putting me into an into a state of just of loving being and this is what i guess uh, what ram does has been trying to teach as well with his teachings man just uh and then he's got a mantra as well right um i'm uncondition now what does it say i am loving awareness yeah i am loving awareness i think i'm pretty sure it's i am loving awareness <laughs> and that's essentially all what we are but that's how i start my day man just literally by loving myself um and it's just puts me in a loving state where just I just feel good. I just feel extremely good. And then I guess just my be by me doing these little things, by being as humble as I can, I don't need to seek that external love from others. But it could be a bad thing. It literally could be a bad thing because maybe I'm like hiding myself in the corner and I'm like, no one talk to me because I feel like that's the type of person um mentally that I've wanted to be and wow like even just having these conversations I'm getting more and more in depth in my head about my thought patterns because while I was going through chemo and I was in limbo I mean even right now we don't know when we're gonna die right like I could literally walk home today and fucking someone just runs a red light and runs me over and I'm dead but um, just going through chemo and kind of knowing that life is all up in the air. Uh, you could die any time. Like maybe the chemo is not going to work and I'm go you know, they're going to tell me I have like three months to live. I have two weeks to live and whatnot. During that time, in my head, I wanted to push everyone away. And my, like, like, like people that are close to me will know because I literally turned my phone off. There was no way of contacting me. Uh, you'll have to go through my mom to contact me. That would be the only way. I turned my phone off. I didn't want to, you know, speak to anyone. And that, and like, why I did that was because I didn't want to talk to anyone because I didn't want others to continue to love me because if I was to die, they they would just be shattered. 
And that was what hurt me the most. Seeing people upset. I don't want to see people upset. That was my mindset. And I feel like that mentality, I'm still grabbing onto that. And then that's why I push people away. And why I don't want validation from others. And why I don't want love from others. And why I always want to love just myself. Because I don't want anything from anyone else wow this is fucking going into in deep and I, this is crazy because this is literally my thoughts i'm going in deep within my thoughts and you guys are coming in for the ride but yeah i should definitely talk about this stuff to a psychologist and i think um this is also the reason why i kind of push away any like any idea of being with someone and and like even even when i have feelings or when i start to like a, like someone i always push it away even though here i'm like i like you i don't say it <laughs> i'm like nah i don't want that it like subconsciously it's like nah you don't need that you don't want that and i think it's because i'm still stuck in that mentality where i don't want to hurt people if i was to fucking die so that's something i guess i should um i should definitely get myself check on and man maybe that maybe you know some of your listeners are like that as well that they don't want like you don't want the external love or you know whenever you come into into a place where you can find yourself building a relationship with someone you walk away from it because when you need it to be loved the most you didn't have it <laughs> one would be when you were, you know, really, really young. So, like, as a baby, you were neglected as a child. And two, maybe because of an experience that happened to you where you needed to be the most loved, but you weren't. Which, for me, could have been going through chemo or going, you know, getting cancer and battling all those mental toughness. Man, like, yeah, getting cancer is one thing physically, but mentally is another thing. And I don't think that's something that it gets discussed or talked about as much. I do have my appointment hopefully next week with my specialist and I should be seeing some nurses. So I might bring up the conversation about, hey, how do I go in, 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 in just talking to people that are getting chemotherapy that are, you know, maybe my age, younger a little bit, and um, maybe I can start a support group or I can find people where I can just connect with and just talk about the feelings. Because sometimes that's all we need to feel a bit better. But yeah, <laughs> bro, I think that's almost touching up on everything I wanted to talk about. But going back to like money spending. Wow, it's funny. Because when I talk to people and especially at the gym or like, yeah, especially at the gym because I literally don't do anything else. And I only hang out with, I guess, a group of people, five max that I see once a month, twice a month, if that. Um, but I was like, fuck, you must have a lot of money if you're traveling all the time. Because literally, like legit, I have not spent a weekend in Sydney for almost a month. Right? Um yeah, it would have been a month. Like every single weekend I've had something. So I was I was gone I went up the coast on a camper van and then I stayed at my mate's Nick Green's house on the weekend and then I had my mate's wedding. Um and we stayed at Avalon Beach and then I went to Queensland, Gold Coast, and then I went to the entrance and then I'm going back to Queensland. Fuck, that's that's like six months, six weeks, six weeks in a row that I won't be, that I won't be spending a weekend at um at home. Fucking crazy. But um yeah, so people are like fuck, you must have a lot of money because you're always traveling. And the <laughs> the reality is, I don't. Uh, I could show you my bank account, and it will be a bunch of zeros throughout all my accounts. I did have some savings, but um, I put all my savings in crypto because. You know, <laughs> I saw some gains in ADA and uh, ADA was like, yeah, I bought ADA when it was like 40 cents US. It's probably like a dollar now. It did pump to $3. I made a lot of money on that. And then because I saw that, I was like, why do I have money, my savings in the bank getting me like 
0.5 interest fucking a year. It's like not worth it. Let's put it on crypto. So my money's in crypto. So I guess I do have money in crypto, but I don't want to take that out. It's like my savings. Um, but on my everyday St. George bank account, it's just a bunch of zeros, man. And when I do a job, uh, I used to, or like when I used to work, when I used to get paid for, I mean, I still work, but when I do a job and we get paid for it, and you know there's money left over after all our expenses after my expenses what i used to do was just invest in crypto buy some nfts but now what i'm doing is just literally i would get paid and all that money is gone in like two hours because i just booked like an airbnb or i just booked my ticket like my flights and an airbnb or i just booked booked something so i'm kind of like i've kind of gone back to living like day by day kind of thing where it's like I have no savings if I don't have any money today I don't know when my next meal is going to come from no it's lit- I mean I can always pull out money from my crypto like I can so it's and I am in profit like I guess I definitely am in profit because of just my ADA bag is holding me because if you follow crypto you know it's kind of not going too well I mean it's kind of picking up but but the good thing about it is as well, like I didn't have money last week and I ended up having to uh, sell some of my chilies and I sold $867, $865 worth, um, <coughs> averaging between like $0.18 cents to like $0.23. Cents. And I just bought back. So my highest was when I sold it at $0.23, cents, but I just bought back at $0.20. Cents. So even by me selling high and buying low, I'm actually like making money. So you should do some research onto crypto because, man, like right now, like if I was to make some sort of analogy or if I was trying to showcase or if I was trying to explain it a little bit better so you can understand, imagine being in the early 2000s, uh, just, you know, just as like Google, blew, not even Google, just as like the internet blew up, man. Just as the internet blew up, and 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 imagine investing in stocks like Google, Apple, um, Amazon. I don't know, but like you know, companies that just had started to pop up because of the internet in the early two thousands, right? Imagine investing then. Imagine how much money they'd be worth now. Like if you invested in like Alphabet, which is Google. I don't know. Uh, even Apple. I think Apple was worth like two thousand a stock. Imagine buying them when it was like a dollar. Imagine putting a hundred dollars and then buying, you know, a hundred Apple stocks, and now they're worth two thousand each. That's that's a lot of money. So I'm trying to compare that time to right now. Imagine that is, imagine I see the same thing is happening, right? But it's not Google, it's not Apple, it's not Amazon that are gonna blow up, or or even YouTube, even though YouTube was bought out by Google. Um, it's now, you know, cryptocurrencies. Because essentially, everything's going to be built on the blockchain. Everything's going to be decentralized in like 10, 15 years. So the stuff that you that you could be potentially buying right now, like think about Ethereum, or well, Ethereum's too much, like Matic, Cardano, fuck, XRP. Oh man, there's like, even just DeFi space, man, decentralized finance, just... Man, if you could just picture that and try to understand that it's literally the same thing it's happening. Web 2.0, it wasn't even Web 2.0, it was Web web 1.0, right? Just Web back in the early 2000s when shit was just starting to pop pop off. This is literally now. Think about it 20 years from now, man. That's why I put all my money on crypto because it's it's not a short-term thing. It's like, I'm going to leave it there for 15 years. I'm buying things that are like 50 cents when in 10 years it's going to be worth like $500 each and I'm just going to be laughing because I might have millies or even billies stacked up if I play my cards right. So the same thing is happening, man. So I would suggest for you to do your own research and invest in some crypto, even if it's just like $100, $500, $1,000, leave it there. Wait five years, see what happens. It might be worth fucking millions of dollars and you'll be thanking me one day. Not even kidding, by the way. Not even kidding because everything is becoming decentralized. So understand what a decentralized company is and how it's going to be the future because fuck the 1%. That's literally what's happening. Fuck the 1%. Fuck the 2%. Fuck the 5% of people that you know can try and run this shit. It's time for everyone to own this shit.
and that's what that's literally what is happening and um i think that is all i am going to be talking about today because i can't think of anything else oh actually i just thought about something so I talked about, you know, the way that I do to love myself every single day in the morning by telling myself. It's essentially, right, you could be telling yourself that I love, I love you. Like, when was the last time you told yourself that you love you, that you love yourself? Like, when was the last time you were like, I love me? Or like, I love you, as in, you know, as in yourself. Like, literally, when was the last time you told yourself that you love yourself? And I guess it's hard for some people because when they were growing up, they were neglected as, as kids and they haven't, you know, neurological, like, they haven't been created. Like, those, those fucking neurons, neurons haven't been created in their brain because as a child, they were not loved. And, and it's hard for them to love and it's hard for them to love themselves. But, man, take the first step, start loving yourself. You know, you could do this thing like what I do. You don't have to fucking kiss your shoulders or your biceps or yourself. I just do that like symbolically, I guess, right? Like essentially when you kiss something, like if you were to kiss your pun and the lips, it's, it's something something emotional. So that's what I'm just trying to to attach to the love that I bring to myself. So, you know, when was the last time you did that, man? When was the last time you told yourself you love yourself? Man, fucking do it now. Tell yourself how much you love yourself. And you should all be loving yourselves, man. You should fucking start your day with so much love. This is the only way we're going to be able to live a happy life. But just showcasing love everywhere we go. Loving everyone. We're Like, at our core, that's what we are. <laughs> like, at our fucking core, that's what we are. In, like, when we're fucking babies... When, when we're fucking tiny little fucking, I don't even know what they are, like the actual technical term would be when you're a little small and you're in your mom's stomach, man. And all you can hear inside there is your heart, uh, your mom's heart beat. That essentially is love, bro. That essentially is the love from your mom. And that's been programmed through you. Fuck. Life is fucking intense, man. Life is fucking crazy. Uh, so, love yourself. And like I said, one little trick that you could do is wake up and just tell yourself, I love you. And then go with your day. Um, but then, yeah, so that was, that was so the other thing that I wanted to talk about that was I kind of took similar approach. A little bit similar, but uh, when I was getting chemotherapy, when I was getting immunotherapy, when I was getting radiotherapy, when I was getting, what else did I get? Salvage chemo, when I was getting stem cell transplant, while I was getting all these things, man, mentally, like consciously, I would try to always send my love to the chemical that I was re receiving, to the machine that I was sending waves to me. Like, I was just constantly sending love. Man, change your perspective. Become a loving being. Magical things are going to happen to you. No fucking joke. So, I would go into hospital as an outpatient. They'll, they'll fucking inject me the chemo. Man, and like, the way that they bring the, the fucking chemo bags. So... They make you sit down in a nice couch, recliner and whatnot and everything. And um, when it's time for the chemo, they bring the, the actual chemicals in a purple bag. The nurses are wearing like a hazmat suit, everything protected, all purple, all geared up, like nothing is showing. Every, yeah, it's like, wow. Um, obviously, that shit's poisonous. That's why you're protecting yourself. And it's going straight into my vein. Holy fuck. Um, but yeah, so like when that was happening... I would be sending my love to the chemo to yeah to the chemo to the machine to everything and and like th the way that I was doing that it was just literally in my mind I was like I love you <laughs> simple as that I was just telling these chemicals that I love them I love you and thank you for everything that you're going to be doing for me it essentially is like a little prayer that I was giving giving to whatever that I was going to receive 
You know, and like, I would be like, oh, like people would be like, why are you doing that? Like, I d <laughs> some people might know, may know that this is, you know, something that I did. Most of the people won't know because I, I was mysterious. I don't open up and tell you guys about the things that I, that I went through or that I used to think while I was getting chemo. But man, that, I was just doing that little practice, bro. Every single time I would go into the hospital to get chemotherapy, I would be telling the chemo drugs, I love you. And I thank you for everything you're going to be putting into my body. Receiving it in a loving state. Love everywhere, man. Bro, if you could put glasses on and then you can, you know, see vibrations and the love that's radiating, you'll be able to see me and I'm just like beaming on orange light because that's how much love was coming out of me. Even though I was, you know, put into, I guess, to some people, a tough situation. Um, but man, challenges are opportunities. Challenges are fucking opportunities, man. And I love it because it's an opportunity to become better. It always is. Uh, but yeah, so even when I was getting radiotherapy, I'd be like, I have three tattoos, man. One here, one here, and one there. Three that three tattoos. Essentially, I had to do that so then they could position the lasers correctly when they were going to send some fucking radioactive waves to me. How cool. Um, same thing. Bro, and I think I did that for, how many days was it? I think it was like 20 days, every single day, except for Sunday maybe. Or I think even Sunday. But it was like 30 days, 20, 20 days in, 22 days in a row of uh, radiotherapy every single day. And I think I was there for like 40 minutes maybe, just lying down while these fucking machines just sending waves at me. And yeah, I'd just be like, I love you. I fucking love you. I love you all. And I'm always going to keep loving you. I love you for whatever you're doing, this, like for whatever you're sending to me. But I was just constantly loving everything that was given to me while I had cancer. And did that help me? Did that somehow make, made you know, all the chemicals and stuff to work. Were they going to work regardless? Probably. Did it make me feel good by me sending love to it? Definitely did. I definitely felt good. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to share that as well because I guess it goes back into trying to share as much love as, as we can and going back to me loving myself. But man, like I've actually caught myself now thinking that I don't seek validation. I don't want love from others because... If I did get it from them, I'm going to hurt them if I die. Wow. That's a lot to take on, man. I really need to speak to someone about this stuff. And, um, you know, if I do, and in it, like the more I learn about myself, the more I'm going to be coming onto this podcast and just sharing that. And I feel like only just now I'm getting more and more comfortable to open up and be real, real open. And it probably comes from last week's podcast because it made me realize that, you know, I like being the mysterious Miguel. My ego loves that shit. But it's time to change it. Because the unknown is fucking beautiful. And yeah, let's jump into the unknown. This is why I do CrossFit, man. Because every workout, you never know what might be. It's the unknown. Jumping into unknown. And it's funny because there's different things that I do. Like even psychedelics, similar to it. It's like jumping into the unknown. You don't never know what the fuck's going to show up. Man, you got to love the unknown. You got to love what you do. Fuck. Sorry, Lenny. I feel like I'm just taking your topic that we talked about. <coughs> Sorry, that we didn't even talk about because it was not planned. But like, I think I got inspired from that that podcast to go touch more about you know, seeking external love, seeking external validation, why I don't do it. What I do to love myself every morning, which you can too. And yeah, man, I'm still blown away though about that Pepsi Super Bowl halftime show. Oh my God, fucking imagine being born in like the 80s and growing up with the 90s. Especially living in like Compton, well, maybe not Compton, but America, like specific places. But man, that would have been fucking intense. And to watch that, holy shit, to be present for that fucking halftime show. Man, I need to watch that shit again. But anyways, guys, I hope you guys are having a lovely day or night, whatever time it may be that you're watching or listening to this podcast. And um, I hope you guys have learned something about me and also about yourselves. 
by me just sharing my experiences and what's been going on with this week. I really thought, you know, this week I didn't, um, I, I, I didn't think this was going to be a really good episode because I don't have much written down, like recap of this week, be honest. That's literally what I've got written down. I've got seeking external, external validation, being humble, loving yourself. Valentine's Day, Pepsi, Super Bowl, halftime show, and sun. <laughs> but yeah, so that's all That's all I've got for today. And um, smash your day, man. And fucking tell yourself that you love yourself for me. I love you guys. Bye.